Hey kids, story time. Something that happens quite often to me is that I find myself providing technical support to tribal villages for my job. It's not bad work, but it requires me to rely on bush pilots to fly me out of hub cities to get to towns with populations that wouldn't even fill an interstate motel's first floor. Usually, getting in isn't much of a problem, but then the pilot fails a breathalyzer test or the winds pick up to two miles an hour and I'm stranded in a village with no internet, phone service, or grocery store until a pilot can be recruited out of the rehab to come get me. Last time this happened, I spent 60 hours and 4 days on Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and still haven't cleared the third act. That's not a joke by the way. The game is easily that long and I'm not quite sure how there are any day one reviews for it outside the industry standard of not actually playing the games they review. This last week it happened again, though not for the usual reason. This time, state troopers showed up and performed a quote, warrant party where they go around the village arresting people who have fled the law previously. They then booked every flight out to transport everyone they arrested back to Anchorage to stand trial. Needless to say, I asked the B&B I was staying at if I could sleep on the second floor. Fortunately for me, I rarely expect anything to go according to plan and downloaded a new game for the trip. As the title of the video might suggest, that game was Parkitect. But really, let's call it what it is. Roller Coaster Tycoon 4. The alleged Roller Coaster Tycoon 4 from 2014 doesn't count. As I've been hyper fixated on the game due to Epic Games apparently not letting me log in offline to play the games I paid for if I haven't connected to the internet in 4 minutes, I've become very good at the game. I've learned all the tricks, secrets, and ways to succeed. And as I highly recommend it, I've decided to share these secrets with you. First things first, throw out everything you've learned binging defunct land videos at 3am about theme parks. This isn't the real world, and Park Tech doesn't play by any rules you may believe in. Instead, start your first game by immediately pausing the game and setting your entrance fee to zero dollars. I'll explain why this is important later. Next, set up areas for your employees to function. In the tutorial, it says that guests don't like to see staff work areas, employees moving supplies around, or bathrooms as it kills the immersion. The simplest solution to this is to hide everything behind transparent chain link fences. That's right, every guest in your park is a post-frontal lobotomy patient who can't see past repeating patterns. I'll explain why this is important later, but for now, just know that you need to put paper thin barriers between staff facilities and guest line of sights. With basic necessities installed, you want to set up rides. Now I assume this game takes place in the United States as guests don't like to have to walk more than 3 feet to get anywhere. Therefore, your most expensive rides should usually go to the front of the park at first. Yes, that was not a mistake, I did imply that people are going to be paying to use your rides. Once again, I'll explain later when I get to the financial side of things, but for now, know that you're going to upcharge for everything except park admittance. The general rule of thumb is that calm rides are usually useless and end up becoming nothing more than decoration once you've established your park. Trust me, I can count the number of times on one hand the ferris wheel had a line. Now, the next step may seem counterintuitive for many of you, however, those of you savvy with Fortune 500 models of running your billion dollar multinational corporation at a net loss will find the strategy pretty straightforward. You see, you're going to want to go into debt. You heard me right. Open up the finance tab and pick any of the two loans that offer less than 2% monthly interest and acquire them. This should net you somewhere around $18,000. This may seem unwise, but if you followed my instructions, you'll be looking at a monthly interest rate of less than 500. The short-term gains this will allow will quickly make up for any initial concerns the repayment causes. Trust me, I once lurked on our Wall Street bets for 5 minutes after the GameStop crash. What does this mean? It means that as a highly upvoted Redditor, not only do I have to introduce myself to my neighbors for legal reasons whenever I move, but I'm also a keen financial guru. So you can trust me when I say, you want the debt. See, like its predecessors before it, Park Tech shines when it comes to roller coasters. And like with any good amusement park, roller coasters are what bring in customers. Try to set up two of them. I find a wild mouse and a general coaster tend to work best, but you can always run two wild mouse coasters if you really need to. If you're lucky, you'll immediately have access to the most lucrative of all roller coasters, the power coaster. See, unlike the other roller coasters where you have to worry about maximum velocity, lateral g-force, or any of those other made up scientific terms, the powered coaster has a controlled speed in which it pulls the ride. But that doesn't matter. You're going to crank that up to 60 kilometers an hour for maximum excitement and sit back while you earn your passive income. Nothing else really matters after that because it's almost impossible to screw up a powered coaster. Now remember when I said we wanted to opt out of having an entry fee to get into our park? There was a reason for that. See, your visitors are Eternals. They do not age, they do not get tired, and they do not leave. Once inside your park, visitors will spend literal in-game months and years paying to go on your competitively priced rides, eating your overpriced burgers, and paying for your fairly priced umbrellas anytime it rains. Because you'll be making so much money on the back end, the amount of money you'll lose by not charging to let guests in becomes negligible. Is it barbaric and cutthroat? Absolutely! And you know what? I don't care. I spend so much time feeling bad about offending characters in RPGs when I pick that option that it's nice to have a game where I can be the soulless capitalist juggernaut I've always wanted to be without consequence. Now once you've established your park, you're going to want to advertise the place. This is where the rest of the money you took out in loans comes into play. 
Advertising costs money, and if you want to reach those Zoomers with paid TikTok skits, you're going to need to have a lot. This is money you won't have if you didn't take my advice. If you did take my advice and have been following my bulletproof 12-step financial plan to success, then the next steps will be your last. Set the advertisement to advertise your entire park for maximum outreach. Set the runtime for three months and pick whichever option you can afford from the dropdown. Finally, unpause the game. I'll take a moment here to explain the four speeds in which this game runs. You have pause, where you'll spend about half your time. The first button, labeled normal speed, may seem like your average pace for the game, but it isn't. If you select this button, you will go through an in-game month at the same rate it takes Bismuth 209 to reach a half-life. The next button you have will have you see a month go by in about the same rate in which an American prisoner can expect to have his death sentence repeal hearing start and complete. Finally, you'll have the fastest, which will be your default setting when you don't have the game paused. Trust me when I say I wish there was a faster speed that didn't involve modding the game. Now, if you followed my advice to the letter by jamming your most expensive rides to the entrance, not charging a cover, and you've blown every penny you have going into crippling debt to afford gimmicky roller coasters and social media advertisements, you'll win the mission in about three minutes on the fastest play speed. I'm not actually kidding here. A lot of these early levels set insanely low goalposts for you that can easily be cheesed by exploiting debt and price gouging. And seeing as I count the amount of missions on one hand that say anything about being debt free, you can pretty much win most missions for the first while by sending your theme park into a debt spiral and then quitting to go to the next stage before your pump and dump catches up with you, just like actual business investing. At this point, you may be thinking to yourself, if this is all the game has to offer, then why did you burn a full day of your life playing it? And honestly, I couldn't tell you. I assume it's because the game perfectly blends the addiction of Civilization one more turn mechanics with a management tycoon. And as I'm in my 30s, games like this and Shipbreaker are rapidly becoming a comfort for me as I fail to keep up with younger gamers and the newest shooters. Buckfutter 420 can't hurt me in Parkitect, and that's exactly how I like it. In all seriousness, Parkitect has carried the charm and spirit of Rollercoaster Tycoon better than any other game I've played. It has the general feel of balancing guest desires with cultivating the perfect theme park to meet ever-changing goals. Combine that with the overall feel-good energy of creating something great, and you have a recipe for perfection. Also, it's insanely fun to exploit. Remember the whole going into debt to give yourself a leg up at the beginning thing I mentioned earlier? That's just the tip of the iceberg. If, say, you've only acquired one loan and a new loan comes along with better rates, it's actually advisable to purchase a new loan and use it to pay off your previous debt and move I like to call paying off the Amex with the Capital One. Additionally, some of the story missions will grant you monetary gain if you meet certain requirements. If you play your cards right, you can take out a loan to buy advertisements or a new coaster, meet your objective, and pay off your loans as well as rake in extra income from your usury laden purchase before monthly interest rolls around. I'm sure this is exactly how the game is intended to be played, but as I attended high school in Alaska, where we didn't have a sex ed program, let alone an accounting class, I'm just going to assume I'm the millennial Rothschild of market manipulation. Actually, financial manipulation is only just the beginning of ways you can achieve your goals. Have an objective that requires you to have a certain number of guests in your park? Make your most exciting rides dirt cheap and have the ride exit lead to a cage. This will allow you to pump numbers by forcing guests who might decide to leave after six straight months of waiting in line to ride the Fart Knocker 6900 to stay until you hit your arbitrary goal. Remember, it's not holding people against their will if they paid for it. Real talk, I don't actually like the person I become when I play this game, and it's very easy to see why billionaires lose all humanity when faced with goals like make it to the moon before Richard Branson, and pack 30,000 Wii vibes in your New Jersey warehouse before an employee dies of heat stroke. Despite the simple goal of building a theme park and all the ways you can manipulate goals to gold streak the main campaign, Parktech isn't without its flaws. Fortunately for Parktech, its shortcomings fall into the Earth Defense Force category of endearing and not Oh hey, the enemy's hitbox was bugged and I just insta died because my model glitched when I was trying to check to see if he was holding the bat while crying or not. The most notable issue is how guests react to their environment. As I said earlier, guests don't really care what your scenery looks like, so long as they're scenery. To prove this, I have two parks. One was painstakingly crafted and built off already established designs to create a thematic park that looks like guests are on an alien planet. Unfortunately, as I didn't properly cover employee facilities, this park has a terrible immersion factor and therefore sucks. Meanwhile, I opened up the sandbox and attempted to make the most clashing layout I could with the rule that I could only use rocks and scenery. I set the ground to be hellfire and made the path in concrete. I then decorated everything with rocks and covered all employee facilities with sheet metal. Sure enough, guests were very happy to stare at a soulless industrialized hellscape because they didn't have to gaze upon the plebeian laborers that made all the magic happen. You may not like it, but this is exactly what an ideal park looks like. Also, God forbid you ever start development on a section of your park and don't fence it off. Much like in real life, guests will always go wherever you don't want them to be. So, say if you built a two mile road that you later plan to connect to the central hub with a tram and didn't fence it off, don't be surprised when the pathway is littered with half your guests walking all the way to the end of the nowhere road, throwing up and then walking back. This might not sound like much more than a biohazard problem, except guests who aren't standing in lines or buying food aren't very profitable. 
Every second they spend outside your rides is a second they're costing you money by existing. Remember, handing people into entertainment cages for profit is good. Freedom of movement is bad. And I guess no review would be complete without mentioning sound. It's there, and that's about all I can say for it. For a game that can easily steal 50 hours of your life, the audio will very quickly get to you as the default music drones yearly in the background, often causing you to forget it's there until you're 8 hours into a park trying to get all the achievements before you're 3, and you realize you're humming along to demented clown music. Luckily, this can be remedied by importing your own music to play on the rides. Alternatively, you could just mute the game and listen to literally anything else. Trust me, it's what I did, and it actually improved my experience. As far as everything else goes, there's not a whole lot to it. Park Tech is a complete game that pays homage to the tycoon games of old while bringing some new experiences to the table. Notably is the coaster creation system, which takes a while to get used to until you realize most humans don't enjoy switching from a 90 km an hour drop straight into a 3 meter 90 degree turn, and you learn how to extend bends to improve intensity of rides without making everyone on them throw up. It is insanely good, and that's not just the Stockholm Syndrome talking after I was forced to only play that because Epic wouldn't let me play my other installed games. Architect is good, and I'd recommend it. That's all for today. See you next time.